Welcome class of 2021. My name is Casey Rowley and I am the college counselor at Beverly Hills High School. And I've created this presentation for students who are preparing and ultimately applying for four-year colleges in the fall. We'll start this video with uh, considerations for the class of 2021 because it is a very specific year. Keep in mind that spring of 2020 everyone was at home. So your classes and your grades might look differently and your extracurricular activities may have been altered drastically. So it's really important to remember that as admission counselors review your applications in the fall semester, they're very aware that spring 2020 looks differently and there's a lot of spaces on a college application for you to share how you were personally impacted or inhibited due to the current uh, climate that we're living in right now. SAT, ACT testing has changed really drastically. So keep in mind to get the most update, up to date information from College Board and ACT. But something to know is that a majority of universities, including the University of California and the Cal State system, have gone test optional for the class of 2021. If you have a test score and you want to register and you're able to take one and send it in, that's great. It will be considered. But if not, it will not negatively impact or have um, an application that is not complete. So that looks differently for each student. And we can talk about that a little bit later on. My general advice for the class of 2021 is to keep your options open and apply broadly. So you might be considering out of state in-state community college. Um, so apply broadly to multiple universities. Keep in mind you can only attend one, so don't apply to so many that you really just uh, can't handle all the applications. Um, but if you are considering a number of options, apply regular decision, speak with an admission counselor, and really get a sense of your options because you have until May 1st of your senior year to commit to a four-year university. Um, so it's important that you give yourself that time, especially in this climate. And of course, I think your college essay is going to be really important. It's a key piece on a college application that you have control on. So for us at Beverly, we have um, college essay support all throughout the summer. Take advantage of that. And that's a huge resource to all of you. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started on admissions review and the college list. It's helpful to know what a college in general will be looking for, for in an applicant. So this here, this list is a list of, uh, it's called a holistic admission review. So it's really broken up in three components. We'll start with the academic component. So this is a, the biggest chunk and one of the heaviest indicators of an admission decision. This includes your GPA, but beyond your GPA, we're looking at the transcript as a whole. Your classes, your grades, how you've added advanced classes, honors, rigor, strength throughout freshman year moving on. If you have a dip in grades, is there a very specific reason why? And then your SAT and ACT or a subject exam, if that makes sense. We then look to your character piece of an application, and that's a really cool piece because it's one that you really get to control. You have an essay component where you're able to share a personal challenge or an insight or growth or strength, interest or a talent. And you get to choose what you want to write and you get to share what's most important to you and help an admission counselor understand you and the world that you are living in. Um, and then there's also the letters of recommendation piece. Private and out-of-state schools will often allow up to one to two teacher letter of recommendations plus a counselor letter. So this is really a window where a college gets to see you as a student in the classroom, how you'll be a community member and their student community. And that's a really wonderful thing to have on your application. And then a list of your extracurricular activities. So this is any committed responsibility or amount of time that you have put in, you get to put on a list of activities and awards. And then the personal piece, so this is where you grew up, your family members, any challenges, any responsibilities, just kind of anything that a college needs to know to better understand the world that you came from. It's important that you guys consider building a balanced list of, uh, building a list of colleges to apply to over the summer and creating a balanced list of colleges. So this means that you're applying to a handful of schools and you have 
a few schools that might be selective and really tough to get into, but also a handful of schools that you know you can get into and feel really confident. You can look at academic profiles on Naviance. You can look at the college's website directly. Just make sure you're always doing uh, using reputable resources and attend events like college fairs, um, whether that's virtually or talking to your admission counselor to really get a sense of admissions and trends. If we look like at a quick application timeline over the summer, as you guys head off into the summer, your college essay is a huge component that you can navigate. You can take the time to brainstorm, draft, and rewrite that college essay. It takes multiple revisions to get a really good college essay. Um, so you can definitely start that now, figure out where you want to apply, start to kind of roughly organize your deadlines for the fall, and then complete something called a brag sheet. So this is a sheet where you can fill out for your counselor um, to see your strengths, your challenges, and what you want to talk about in a, in a letter of recommendation. And so thinking about what teachers you want to uh, write your letters of recommendation, registering for an SAT or ACT exam if that's accessible and in uh, your plan if you can do that. Um, I, if you are planning on an SAT or ACT, I would recommend that you register early. Um, the locations may vary. Um, and if it gets canceled, then you can always go to the next one. Talk to your counselor or me as your college counselor uh, if you need more individual guidance in that. And then any online classes or at home activities that you're doing in the summer. Then we head into the fall. So this is where you're actually applying to college. So you're organizing your deadlines. I recommend having an Excel spreadsheet, a notebook. Um, if you're applying early to colleges, um, meaning you're applying by November 1st or an earlier deadline, usually private or out-of-state schools may offer an early application choice. You can get your application in early, you hear back before the holidays. Um, so if you're applying early, get organized and on top of that. Tie up SAT, ACT testing, typically by October, November at the latest. Um, if you're applying regular, you can even test up until December and still submit that score. Check in with your teachers and request them on your college apps for your letters of recommendations and your counselors. And then also keep in mind that every college has an admission counselor that is regional to our school and you are able to connect with them and learn about application deadlines, programs, majors. Um, so make sure that you're really connecting with them as well. When we look at the different types of application systems, you have the public schools in California that include the University of California and the Cal State system. The University of California, there's nine undergraduate campuses that you guys can apply to. The application is open August 1st and due November 30th. Their admissions are really competitive. They're looking for a minimum of a 3.0 GPA, um, but typically students gaining admission are much higher than that. They look at your core academic classes throughout high school. Um, for the class of 2021, your SAT or ACT scores are test optional. Um, so that's not a heavy component in admissions decision. There's no letters of recommendation, but you do have a lot of space to write your activities and awards. And you can choose the major you're applying to on the different campuses or even undecided. And then there are personal insight questions out of eight questions, you choose four to respond to, and these are your college essays. You apply on one website and you can apply to multiple universities. I recommend that you guys apply broadly throughout the UC system. The Cal State schools, there's 23 campuses up and down the coast of, uh, up and down California, and that application is open October 1st and due November 30th. Similar to the UCs, you can apply online on the Cal State application and apply to multiple universities. This is a very straightforward academic review. There's no essay, there's no letter of recommendation, and there's no activity sheet. So it's much more of an academic review for the Cal State campuses. They're going to look at your grades, your classes, your core academic classes, they look at the campus you're applying to and the major you're applying to. You can apply undecided as well, um, but that's pretty much it. SAT, ACT is test optional for the class of 2021. If you have a score and you feel like that will add value to your academic review, you can send it in. 
but if you don't have a score, it won't negatively impact. I recommend with the Cal States, you can go on their website and search the schools by major, and that gives you a really clear idea of what is available to you all. When we look at the private schools in California, there are a number of them. They range in size, location, selectivity. You have schools like USC, which is kind of your larger traditional spirited college campus, but then you have all of, for example, your art schools like Otis College of Art and Design. You have private universities like University of San Diego and Cal Lutheran University. A big myth you guys I want you to be mindful of is that private schools are more expensive. This is not the case. Sometimes private schools have a lot more money to be able to give in scholarship. So this goes back to my recommendation of applying broadly. Their application deadlines vary um, and their selectivity will vary as well. So this is where your research comes into play. Typically you'll have um, an admissions review much like the one we just discussed where you have an academic review, your essays, a letter of recommendation, an activity sheet, and that's how they make their decision. If you're applying for a visual performing arts school, there might be an interview or portfolio audition for specific programs. My recommendation would be to get to know your counselor. Um, there's a link here that you can go and access all of the schools for that. And then don't forget our out-of-state schools. So out-of-state, we have private public. There are thousands and thousands of these schools. A lot of them offer non-selective or slightly selective admissions with non-impacted majors. That just means if you're a student wanting um, to directly enter a program that might be harder to get into in California, for example, it could be more accessible out of state. A lot of schools have low out of state tuition. There's programs like the Western Undergraduate Exchange that offers scholarships and discounts to out of state students. There's honors programs um, at, at larger public schools to help make a, a smaller academic environment. So start your research with a few key factors um, and then narrow down your search. So consider size, location, major. Um, much like the private schools, their dates and deadlines of applications completely vary. So do your research and check those out. So some final thoughts for you guys. Big bullet points here, get to know your admission counselors. I cannot stress enough, these um, individuals are regional and local to our school and they're here to help you as a student. They are a representative of the college and university. You can Google them and find them or check with your counselor and we're able to share that information with you. Fall college admission visits. If we can't have them in person, they will be uh, virtually. And so get connected with those admission counselors it's important that you stay organized and then also stay true to you, meaning that college admissions can get quite overwhelming. Um, so try, try, try not too hard to uh, connect or compare yourself with your peers. Um, keep in mind with college costs, you can use the net price calculators. They're available on every college's website. Net price calculator is a tool that allows you to get an a rough estimate of how much it will cost for you to attend that university. A bulk of your scholarship money and the money that you receive will come from the university itself. So take the time to do your research, go to the college's websites, use those net price calculators and get an estimate of what that would cost. Um, Beverly Hills High School scholarships are available in your senior year beginning in January to apply to. Um, and just know your options ahead of time so you're not feeling really stuck. And then keep in mind that you can access us on the Beverly Hills High School website. Just click on College Center or you can head on over to collegecounselorrally.com for more information. Keep in mind that uh, college admissions information can change. So stay very connected with your counselor. Make sure you're looking at reputable resources like the colleges online. And we're here to support you, so best of luck to the class of 2021.